foraging gives us that, that unique ability to really engage with, with our clients and, and share unique stories and the flavour of our local region and that's something I think is, is really powerful and it's a message that I want to sort of share with other chefs and give them access to ingredients and, and ways of procuring things. Welcome to the third Drinks with Chefs. As hospitality workers, I'm sure we've all been well educated on being wasted. Today we'll certainly be looking into more than that and digging a little bit deeper. This is about challenging the way that we look at food within the industry, reconnecting and collaborating, and to give an insight to the success stories and the realism of what it actually takes to make it. I firmly believe that understanding why you're doing something is an important aspect of doing it well. So today we've gathered industry mentors from award-winning chefs, bartenders, forward-thinking farmers, foragers and even scientists to bring you the facts and I hope we can create value together. I called up my fish supplier and said what have you got that you're going to chuck in the bin that I could serve to people like legally, ethically and <laughs> they're not going to get sick from. Fish heads is what came up. So you're wasting all your ink, circling lines. I just thought I'll tell you a little bit my own sort of um, venture. I'm, I'm a trained botanist. I work as an env environmental scientist with a lot of agriculture, and really, you know, I'm interested in plants and soil and microbes and things like this. So this is going back 10,000 years or 12,000 years to 10,000 BC. You see the human population bobbed around at a very low level. And only in the last 200 years have we bumped up to what's now 7.4 billion people. And, you know, they're thinking that we're plateauing by 2050 at about sort of 9 to 10 billion people. And that means we have to double food production pretty much from now on. And that's a big challenge. Instead of just throwing the bones away, instead I uh, basically scraped every carcass of 25 fish for you guys. He runs on schedule he keeps all of our plans. Then over the top was just uh, wood sorrel and uh, your sea spray. That was it. Just trying to use as much as what was around to the kitchen and put it all together. <laughs> About 10 years ago, I had this moment, if you like, where I kind of looked at what I was doing. And I wanted it to mean more, a bit beyond technique and, and, and my ego, if you like. And I decided I needed to, to start thinking about my produce a bit more sustainably. In the background of that, I'm a fish nut. And if I went to Tasmania and someone gave me barramundi and mud crabs, I might want to punch them. But certainly the reverse was true here, in my city and my seafood was not representative of who I was, who I am. And, and really, like if you think about it, what your seafood suppliers are providing you, there's not gold band snapper schools floating around in Moreton Bay. So our dish was um, basically all based on scraps from in the, from in the kitchen. And it's a dish, we, it's actually on our digging out at the moment. I always say it's the ugliest dish we do, but I think it's got the most, the most sort of flavour in it. Um, so essentially suckling pig, which we're cooking in the kitchen at the moment, we're confiting a whole pieces of suckling pig. When you comfy it and let it cool, all the juice settles in the bottom. So that's essentially what the sauce was. We then take all the scrappy bits that we don't know the trim, which we uh, rolled in tapioca flour and then deep fry and then glaze up in the juice sort of left over from it. So that was the pork component of it. Um, there's uh, our version of mahama. So mahama is made on albacore tuna, which is essentially bycatch. So a lot of it gets thrown away. In days of starvation and whatnot, all they have was onions, essentially. So there's all these great dishes based on onions. We took the onions, we actually cooked them in um, in whey that we have left over from yogurt, um, just to give them a real nice sourness. I'm just going to dump this speech because I've gone so far, <laughs> so far off it. Um, there's a huge scam in the industry about antibiotics. Everyone wants to be antibiotic free because we all know it's bad. We have a suspicion that it's not good for us, um, and it's it's called a coccidiostat. 
It's literally half strength antibiotic that they declared is not an antibiotic and therefore they can add it in. So I dehydrated the skins and um, turned it into a flour and used that to make a shortbread. So it's like the potato um, starch component. And you can basically use that with any sort of um, off cuts instead of throwing it into the compost bin or the bin, um, any sort of starchy vegetable like taro and sweet potato. And so the cores I use to infuse into the milk. So this was just a little, little drink to match with it using some of Queensland's finest rum. Uh, Bundy with some leftover banana skins just infused in there. I think with foraging, there's a lot of ethics that come into foraging. I don't know how many of you guys go out foraging actively or have had a crack at it. Anyone been out yet? So I think when we go out into the environment, uh, looking at sustainability, it's all about environmental stewardship. You know, when we go outside of the kitchen into the environment, we, we have a bigger ecological footprint. Not only are we looking into wastage, and the potential future of food, but the sustainability of our industry. The people on stage are just the conversation starters. At the end of the day, it's not about the individual. It's about taking a real look into what kind of future we want and actively putting in the right foundation 